Huh? Huh? Yeah. I got shirts. If you want one, go to the store or shop or wherever. You know. You can get uh, Time Preservation Society shirts. I think I got one that's uh, entirely too big, but um, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> the Bai Fei Li KK707. 707707. I'm back with another Bai Fei Li mic review. This time, it's a different one. It's an end address, and it's actually, once again, not bad. I mean, <laughs> that's not bad. I'm going to turn up the volume here. It's the Bai Fei Li KK707. It's a little bit of nerdy stuff. Maybe a, maybe a lot of it. And it's coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can be notified the minute new content drops. Cheers. Okay, so Bai Faley sent me this mic for review. It's not the one I wanted to test out. I really wanted to test out the V47 or even the 87, but no dice. They sent me this one instead. So I'm going to try to make this review a comparison review so you can get a feel for this mic against other mics, including the other Bai Faley's that I have and see if the KK707 is worth it for you. So no music, just comparisons, talky talky. Bai Feili, as you may know, is a Chinese microphone company that operates mainly on Alibaba. They appeared on the scene, at least on my radar, in 2023, which was Barbenheimer ago. But I have no idea when they really started. No one knows. It's an esoteric secret lost to eternity. Anyway, Bai Feili shocked some of the YouTube mic world with their $50 C414 mic. I reviewed that anomalous mic right here. And it was surprisingly good. It's worth a lot more than the $50 they're charging. I then reviewed the Bai Feili V10, which the body alone was worth more than the $70 they're charging. Another good mic for a staggeringly cheap price. Then I decided to battle both the C414 and the V10 against each other in a video I called the Battle of the Bi Failies. If you ask me, I'm still partial to the C414, the 25mm capsule one, not the 34mm capsule one. I haven't tried the 34mm one yet. So that brings us to this handheld looking, but definitely don't handhold it mic, the KK707. I just wanted to call attention to the box. Look, best feelings. So, uh, so yeah, good times. Let's take a gander, shall we indeed? Surprise, surprise, it looks strangely similar to a very well-known and pricey mic. It looks like the Neumann KMS-105, or 104. Though this mic doesn't sound or behave anything like the KMS-105, Bai Feili really enjoys cloning the body shapes and styles of expensive and well-known mics. The Neumann original is a super cardioid. This mic is a regular cardioid. It looks like a handheld mic, but I'll tell you right now, that's not how you should use this mic. The capsule isn't suspended or anything like that. It's just in there awaiting any vibrations to become available so it can pounce and amp them right up. Inside the rigid grill is a piece of foam suspended just above the 32mm capsule. There are no other switches or buttons on this mic. It requires an XLR cable and phantom power to operate. It's very heavy and built like a Sharp Brark house. It weighs... I have no idea. It weighs more than my scale will allow. Probably more than a pound. Also, I need a better scale. It measures... Oh, hold on a second. Just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape was handmade in a prison cell by a brilliant but interesting fellow called Hannibal Lecter. I uh, picked it up in Baltimore in 91. <laughs> anyway. 
It measures about 7.5 inches long and about 2.5 inches in diameter at its fattest part. Bifaley says that this is a noise-canceling mic. It's not. It's not a noise-canceling mic. It's just a cardioid. Not a super or hyper cardioid, just a, just a regular cardioid. I should note that this mic has a frequency response of 40 hertz to 16 kilohertz, so not full frequency, but that's not always a bad thing. It's sometimes a classic sound. Sound. Right. So you've been hearing me on this all along. What do you think? Do you like it? I think it has some troublesome mids here and there, if you ask me. But let's do some back and forth comparisons between other mics. All right, let's start off with another Bifaley. Here I am on the Bifaley C414 25mm capsule condenser. I think this is Bifaley's best mic. This is what this mic sounds like. This mic goes for around $50, but I've now spied it on Alibaba for $35. <laughs> so... Who knows? I don't, I don't even know. I don't get it, but, uh, but here it is. The Bifaley C414. So let's go back to the KK707. And now I'm back on the KK707. 707. 707. 707. Hmm. I don't know. 707, I think. Yeah, I'm going to say it that way. This is the sound. How about trying it on another Bifaley, the V10? Let's give her. And now I'm on the Bifaley V10. This is what the V10 sounds like. The V10 here goes for about $60 to $70 US. I don't know anymore. Who knows? They fluctuate. What do you think of the V10 when compared against the KK707? Already forgot? No problem. I'll remind you. And now I'm once again back on the KK707. And uh, I'm fresh out of bifaley mics to compare to. But that's no problem because now we're going to go higher. Let's try the uh, Rode NT1. Okay, so now I'm on the Rode NT1, not the fifth generation one. I think this is fourth. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's the black Rode NT1, not the NT1A, because that one's a. <clears throat> anyway, this is the sound of the Rode NT1. What do you think of this? This mic is what? $300? $250? I don't even know. Maybe it's $250. Yeah. So this mic is around $250 or something like that by Rode. And uh, it's considered among one of the quietest microphones in the world. And uh, this is the sound of it. So what do you think? What do you think of the Rode NT1 in comparison? All right. Back to the KK707. And now I'm back on the KK707. I think I'm going to try one more mic. Let's shoot high and uh, try it against the amazing Loudon Audio LS208, which is another end address condenser mic. Let's do it. And now you're hearing the sound of the illustrious Loudon Audio LS208, another end address condenser mic, but one that is leaps and bounds higher in price and quality. This mic retails for about 600 US dollars. It's my favorite end address condenser on earth. What do you think of this comparison? I, I already just, I love this mic. What do you think of this comparison? I'll help you out. Let's go back to the KK707. Oh boy, looky here. I'm back on the KK707. I wasn't going to do this, but um, what the hell? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's hear the Townsend Labs L22 Sphere mic, otherwise known as the Universal Audio DLX. All right, so now, ooh, listen to that. Whoa. All right, so right now I'm on the Townsend Labs L22 Sphere mic, uh, which is now called the Universal Audio Sphere DLX, as I said a second ago. Um, so I'm using no emulations. This is straight, right? I'm using the linear, the straight you know, DLX sound with nothing on it. This is just the mic itself. This is what it sounds like, okay? So this is the sound of a of a of the blank canvas that is the DLX on its own. It's a $1,500 USD microphone. So uh, this is the sound of this mic in comparison. So let me ask you something. In a, in a second, I'm going to flick back over to the uh, mic that we're reviewing, the KK707. Um... But when you flick back there, 
I want you to tell me, can you hear the difference between $50 and $1,500? Could you tell the difference between $50 and $600 with a Loudon Audio LS208? Could you tell? Uh, that's, that's what it comes down to. And uh, <laughs> you're, you're about to find out. All right, back to the KK707. And there's some comparisons. What do you think? How did the KK707 compare against the others? How about which mic sounded best to you? Because it's all up to you. This is a seriously subjective thing, microphones. I mean, there are bad microphones, noisy and, you know, farty or whatever. But you got to find what you like, what appeals to you. And that's, that's, that's what it's all about. And you never know what that's going to cost. It might cost, you know, $50 or it might cost... Three thousand, ten thousand, fourteen thousand, twenty thousand, forty thousand dollars. So, what's your pick? As far as the KK seven hundred seven goes, it's actually not bad. I, I can't believe it, but it's but it's not bad at all. It's it's decent sounding. Like I said earlier, it, it's a bit of troubling parts in the mids, but nothing a little soothe too can't take out. You know what I mean? I will say that when I first plugged it in, it was doing some strange waterfall sounds. It sounded like a, a bad cap or something. But it stopped doing that, and uh, I wasn't able to capture that on a recording. It just did it when I first plugged it in. So I don't know what that was about. But uh, super, super quiet. It's good. I often worry about quality control from Bifaley. A $50 mic is bound to produce at least a few duds. But so far, it's been three for three. You can purchase the KK707 on Alibaba by going to the link in the description below. It's less than $50 USD currently. No matter what, that's an insane price. Still, would I buy this mic? No. But that's because I personally much prefer the C414 if we're splitting hairs here. And the body shape that the C414 comes with appeals more to me. You know what I mean? But if this was the only mic by Faley made and I had to choose between this one or uh, Maano or Fine Fine, I'd choose this one probably. You might really enjoy the sound and look of this mic more than the others. In that case, choose this one. There are no wrong answers for decent sounding mics, as I said. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Well, that'll just about do it for me. So I wanted to take a moment to thank the following people for pressing the join button on my channel and becoming members here. Jimmy Can Read, the half man of Oz, Arthur Endline, I hope I'm saying that right. The Logician, Aura, Niles Chamberlain, Daniel Godet, or Godet, however you like it. ESM and Mindo Works, thank you all for being members here. I really appreciate the support. I'm still learning the back end to make this all work, but thanks for bearing with me. Cheers, fellows. If you're interested in becoming a member yourself here at the Time Preservation Society, just hit that join button. It's somewhere on my channel. I don't know. I don't know things. Anyway, yeah, cheap, good mics. Hmm. Look around. They're out there. Happy cheap mic hunting. I'd say good luck, but in my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Bye now. In transmission. Oh, yes. So, this shirt, yes, it's good. You're focused on me, you should be focused on the hand. Focus on this one. Come on, come on. There, finally. 